What is up guys, Top Tier Yu-Gi-Oh here, and today I want to do some Zodiac test hands because I really want to show you guys how I like to play this deck, what's been working for me, maybe talk a little bit of theory as well. And so if this sounds interesting to you, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up because it really helps the channel out a lot. But uh, let's actually start with some of the theory. And so the big one here that I really want to talk about is who's the beatdown, which is all about deciding what role you need to play within a game, either the beatdown or the control. The beatdown player wants to end the game as soon as possible, and the control wants to extend the game. And this theory is one of the most important when it comes to winning at a high level. All of the best players utilize it, and if you want to learn more about this theory, a link to my entire video on it will be in the top right corner of the screen, so definitely check that out after finishing this one. <laughs> and, uh, and so for Zodiacs, we really have to ask ourselves though, what's our role going to be within a game? This is a question we need to ask ourselves both in our deck building and throughout the game to help us optimize our technical play. And in most cases, I think we need to be the control because we really don't have the ability to end the game very quickly. If you think about how Zodiacs generally end the game, you maybe can make a Mega Clops, but if you use the effect, the damage is halved. And even if you don't need to use the effect and your opponent has a clear board, which is super unlikely, it's still only going to be 4,000, which isn't game. It's not 8,000, you know? And so we really have trouble uh, being the beatdown. And so what now? What do we do? How does this affect our gameplay? Again, these are the questions that we're going to have to ask ourselves in order to shape our success. And again, because we're optimizing to play the control, I think that means we have to adjust our technical play. And I generally like to go through the following little checklist every single turn just to make sure that my bases are covered. And the first thing is that I try to establish some kind of defense, whether that be Dryden't, hand traps, real traps, floodgates, whatever it may be, you need to have some kind of defense. If you don't have defense, you gotta find it. Whether it be drawing through Thoroughblade, Desires, setting up an Avarisk combo, some way you need to get into some defense. And that, that's paramount because extending the game doesn't matter if you lose. Like, it, you know, you don't wanna lose, obviously. The second thing is that you wanna make sure that you have a follow-up play. So again, what's the point of extending the game if you don't have a play on turn two? Like, you might as well have just lost. There, there's just no point. So you have to have a follow-up play as well. This can be in the form of maybe holding an extra Zodiac monster in hand, which is why it's important to play a high number of them, as well as so you just see them in the first place. But holding a Zodiac in hand can be a follow-up play. Adding a Tinky back to your hand with a Fire Fist combo. Adding a Rat back to your hand with Bunny Blast. There's a lot of different ways you can set up a follow-up play, but it's definitely important to to just try to do. You can always draw into a follow-up play if you can on your next turn if you get lucky, but you don't want to leave your ability to play on turn two up to luck. Because as we all know, especially in tournaments, especially when it matters, your luck's gonna run out. It just happens. So you can't, you don't want to, you shouldn't leave things up to luck like that. And then the third thing and the final thing is to set up for some efficiency plays. So you either want to start recycling your resources, so you want to maybe try to draw into a pot of avarice, or you want to set up a zodiac combo. So maybe dump combo to the graveyard, or make sure that you're able to activate your combo by not summoning mega clops, because if you go into mega clops, you're not using combo, obviously. And so that could be something, but you want to make sure that you're able to do this because the efficiency is so important when you're playing a control deck because when we're able to stop traditional beatdown decks, like maybe add emancipators from playing, sometimes they're going to transition into playing the control as well because they're going to try to wait the things out, wait the game out, extend the game a little longer, keep drawing into maybe more extenders, more combo pieces until they feel comfortable playing through our hand traps and through our defense and then eventually ending the game. We don't want them to do that, and so we have to play efficiently so that we can keep up that pressure and keep putting out defense, 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 and eventually maybe even go for game as well before they're even able to play. So it's very important to be able to play efficiently as well. And so defense, follow up, efficiency. It's kind of like short, medium, and long-term goals. It's like your defense uh, allows you to survive until turn two, your follow up lets you play on turn two, and your efficiency lets you keep playing throughout the rest of the game. And so this is the general order of operations that I kind of go through in my mind. It gets kind of tricky when we're trying to play through hand traps and other defense, but I still try to keep this in mind every single time I play this deck, or really any deck for that matter. It kind of changes depending on the deck, but you know, for this deck in particular, that's definitely what I'm thinking of. And now speaking of hand traps, a common comment on the deck profile video, which will also be linked in the top right corner of the screen, was a, again, a common comment on that was the lack of combo cards and extenders cards like Time Thief, Winder, or Parallel Exceed. What about those? 
And the main reason I don't play those cards goes back to exactly what we've been talking about. I'm usually trying to set up defense, follow up, and then efficiency. And so what purpose do extenders really serve here? Well, generally defense. Both of these extenders enable combos that allow you to set up more defense in the form of rank fours or link plays. This is an immediate goal, but the downside is that they don't allow for follow-ups and are generally inefficient plays. They both force you into using your rat to dump either ram ram, or usually ram ram, which means that you aren't sending combo to set up for efficiency plays unless you hard draw it, or dumping bunny blast, which gives you follow-ups in most cases. And so that means when you have this combo, when you draw into one of those extenders, you better win the game. But in Zodiacs, I don't think we have any combos that are powerful enough to win the game. It's not like we're playing at Emancipators where we're ending on multiple negates and Destruction Sword. But it, we're not Eldritch either, to, or Synchro Eldritch either, where we're ending on two negates, Herald, which has you know, other effects as well. Savage Dragon has a ton of attack. Like We're not ending on those type of boards either. So our combos are going to be weak, but in doing this, we're opening ourselves up to cards like Nibiru and other hand traps, and we're sacrificing our ability to set up for our future turns. And so I think with the number of hand traps that are even being played right now, it's kind of spooky doing this. And so I really think that individual cards like hand traps are generally better because they allow you to still use your Zodiac engine to focus on setting up for the future, setting up defense, and sticking to the game plan instead of playing into disruption to set up a combo that's not that good to be honest not as good as the other decks combos however the reason that i do like the fire fist combo so much though is that it does give us a follow-up play it satisfies another part of that checklist and it never needs to be done for a card to be useful like if you draw into the time thief winder or the parallel exceed you either have to play into a hand trap or it's a dead card but with the fire fist combo you don't have any cards like that and sure you have an engine requirement because you have to play buffalo the extenders in this deck like Winder and Exceed also kind of act like engine requirements at times too, especially if you don't have the ability to play through a Nibiru or play through a hand trap. That's eff that's effectively an engine requirement. So we really don't want any of those cards. I mean, obviously these are better than Buffalo, but they're not perfect either. But with Tinky, you don't really uh, you don't have to worry about that because you can play defensively under a Nibiru with a Tinky. You can play pretty safe with those cards, and then you can just go into your combo later on. Whereas with these, you kind of can't. And then finally, the extenders are only good in complex game states. Both of them are only good when you're already able to play. But that kind of contradicts how we generally play this game because we tend to simplify the game state. We're using cards like Dryden to take things away from our opponent. We have hand traps, again, taking cards away from the opponent and ourselves, simplifying the game state. But in simplified game states, we don't want extenders like this. And if you think about it in the most extreme sense, say you get to the point where both players are top decking. What do you want to top deck? Would you rather top deck a Time Thief card or a Parallel Exceed, which is an extender that generally gets you defense? Or would you rather top deck a defensive card itself, like an Ash Blossom, a Impermanence, something like that, like actual defense? I would rather I would rather top deck into the Hand Trap because that's actually going to protect me versus drawing into the extender which is not going to protect you in a simplified game state, nor will it protect you going second. So you lose a little bit of that versatility there, which is important for a deck like Zodiacs, because it's not like we're a powerhouse and can afford to sacrifice that. We need to be able to play in the most situations possible. We need that versatility. But that's enough talk. Let's go ahead and get into some actual testing. I know you guys are probably tired of this, but if you guys do want to talk some more theory, definitely let me know. And uh, let's get into some actual Yu-Gi-Oh now. Just going to give... Do a little bit of shuffling real quick, just so you guys can see. I already power shuffled before this and everything, but uh, I just want you guys to see that I'm not cheating or anything. One last cut, and then let's draw the hand. Cataroost, Tanky, Nibiru, Thoroughblade, and Ram Ram. So this is a very interesting hand because we have multiple zodiac monsters four zodiac monsters and like i said in the profile this is the downside of playing so many in the main deck there are going to be times where you draw three to four zoo monsters it's not very likely but it can happen here the card that we're we have defense as well and we're going to have obviously a dryden but what we're missing here is uh, an efficiency play so we have defense in the form of dryden and nibiru we have a follow-up because we can just hold one of these but we don't have that efficiency and so the best way to do that, I, th I think there are multiple routes we could go. We could uh, we could use Tinky to search Rat, use Rat to dump a combo. That could be one thing that we could do. But 
I think since we have the follow-up play, efficiency isn't as important. I think it's more important right now in this hand to actually draw into some more defense because we really don't have very much. We just have the Nibiru. And that could be not good if we're playing against Adamantipators or we're playing against a slower deck or a deck that can just play through Nibiru. I think I'd rather have, I'd feel safer with a little bit more defense. And so what I would do in this hand actually is to still activate the Tinky Search for Rat just to thin the deck a little bit out. But I think we're going to end up doing a bunch of Thoroughblade uh, shenanigans. Wow. All of my defense is right here. Not all, but a good amount of it. But yeah. Search the Rat. And now we're going to go into some Thoroughblade plays. And this is kind of tricky because we are going to play into Nibiru a bit. But I think because we have a Nibiru, we can kind of, you know, we, we'll be okay. Like, if we get nibiru then we maybe can just Nibiru our opponent back and then play on the next turn. If we get nibiru and we can't Nibiru them, then we'd be in kind of a rough spot. But that would be the case anyways because we'd only end on Dryden Nibiru otherwise. And so I, I think this is kind of... A hand where you you maybe have to play into Nibiru and other hand traps as well. So we're gonna start by normal summoning the Thoroughblade, activating Thoroughblade's effect to discard the Ram Ram. We want to discard the Ram Ram because doing this either will give us the ability later to combo if we decide that's what we want to do, or it's gonna let us draw again by triggering Thoroughblade again if we realize we need to get some more uh, some more defense still. So activate Thoroughblade's effect, draw into a Whiptail. So yeah, I still want more defense, and so. I want to be able to trigger the uh, third blade again. So what we're going to do is go into Shock 9. This is summon number two. Shock 9, bring back the Ram Ram. This is summon number three. And I think you want to do this. Like you want to uh, be able to trigger your Dryden and do everything before the fifth summon. That way you're actually getting off uh, all of your plays. So you don't want to like summon extra Xyz monsters for no reason. So like what we could do here is just stack other Xyz monsters, but then if we end up getting the beard at the wrong time, then it could really hurt. So I think we just want to go straight into the Dryden as early as we can just to get it off. So from here we activate Dryden's effect targeting the Ram Ram. That's the fourth summon by the way, Dryden. This is the fifth summon, so we summon the Thoroughblade and trigger Thoroughblade's effect again. And obviously here we want to discard that Cataroost. And then draw into. I forgot if I shuffled. I'm pretty sure I shuffled. We'll do quick cut. Crow. Alright, so that kind of worked out. Now we have Crow Nibiru, and we're still going to end with a live Dryden't. Assume we, we don't get Nibiru. If we do get Nibiru, then that's fine. We have both of these. If we don't, then cool. So now from here, we could go. Yeah, we can go Borbo here. Borbo, Tiger Mortar. Tiger Mortar is going to put material back under the Dryden so that it's live. And then we can Hammer Kong on top of that. So now we have Dryden Hammer Kong. So the Dryden is going to be protected from targeting effects. Then we've got Nibiru DD Crow. So we have some kind of defense. We have three forms of defense right here. We've got the follow up with the rat. Very strong follow up as well because we can also just dump combo to set up some efficiency as well. We got the Hammer Kong for a little bit extra defense as well as just being another monster on the board. So we're in a very good position here. Then obviously in the end phase, we are going to uh, detach for Hammer Kong. So this puts us in a pretty good position. If by some chance our opponent like bricks and we're able to play until next turn, we could very easily go into like a Mega Clops or go into bigger Link plays. If either of these is left on the board, it's very easy to continue to combo off even under Nibiru. So, or under the threat of Nibiru. So we're in a very good position here. I'd say this is a solid hand that the Thoroughblade uh, definitely helped out a lot. Getting us into the Crow was very good. Even Whiptail was a pretty solid draw. Because now if they think that they're going to attack over the Dryden to get an easy out, we could just banish whatever they do. Or if... Yeah, that's the most likely scenario. I mean, Whiptail is good in other ways as well, like putting up more damage. So we have this access to a Thoroughblade at least. So something else we could do in the next turn if... By some chance, our opponent has like a clear board, a very weak board. What we could do is, uh, we'll end up having to detach for the for the Hammer Kong, but what we could do is uh, summon another Thoroughblade. Not Thoroughblade, but Tiger Mortar. 
use Tiger Mortar to put Thoroughblade under the Dryden't, Normal Summon Whiptail, and then attack for 12, Whiptail 28. So that's already 4,000 damage right there. So even drawing the Whiptail is good because it can be used offensively like that. Not just on the next turn, but in the future as well if you can hold it. Or you can use it to kind of DD Warrior Lady your opponent when they try to attack. So it can be good in a couple different scenarios. Let's go ahead and move on to the next hand though. Definitely really like the uh, the double Thoroughblade draw hands. I mean, you obviously don't want to have to draw hands where you have to do that. Like you don't want to draw four monsters, but I think when you do resolve that play, it's kind of cool. Especially when you have a Desires too. Maybe even an Avarice and you can be drawing like four to six cards in a turn. That's usually insane. Again, the only downside is potentially playing into Nibiru. Crow also hurts, Valor and Permanence. A lot of hand traps right there. But you can say that about most of the things we do in this deck, most of the combos, which is exactly why some of the time I think that it's best not to play into those combos just to keep things relatively safe and simple because playing into a hand trap at the wrong time can end you. But let's go ahead and draw into this next hand, starting with the Tinky. This hand's already pretty good. Pot of Avarice, wow, I'm so good at this game. DD Crow, Foolish Burial. This is a card that I was testing. I mentioned the deck profile. It's kind of like a pseudo rap here, so if we drew like Whiptail Foolish, it's the same as a rat. So I kind of liked it in a sense. Still testing it. I'll probably take it out though. And then Impermanence. Solid. So we already have two forms of defense. We have an efficiency play. We have a starter card, any zoo card we want. And we have an extender. Well, somewhat of an extender. So this is a pretty solid hand. I think what we want to do with this definitely is set up a follow-up play. Because uh, again, we have defense, efficiency, starter. But we don't have the follow-up play. And so what I want to do with this hand is activate the Tinky to search rat. Ooh, that was quick. Uh, Tinky Search Rat. And then... I think I would... Yeah. Normal Summon Rat. Nah, I, th I think you want to Foolish first. With both of these, we want to get Combo Engraved, because that's going to be just good in general. But we also want to get the Bunny Blast Engraved, because the Bunny Blast is what's going to enable the follow-up play. And I think here you kind of want to play around, like, an Ash or a... Uh, like Ash or Valor and Permanence or something like that. If you normal summon the rat first and your opponent uh, decides to Ash or in Permanence or Valor or something like that, you're unable to send the combo now. You ha you're gonna send, cause you can send the Bunny Blast with a Foolish Burial, but you're not getting combo. And of course we have the Avarice, sure, but we really wanna get both. And so I think the potential play might actually be to activate the Foolish Burial first and then maybe Maybe they Ash or something. They probably don't because they know you have Rat. Okay, so yeah, maybe we Foolish before even activating the Tinky. That might be the play. Ideally, they don't have a Hand Trap though, but I think you might want to try to bait out the Ash first. That way you can guarantee the Rat resolves. But I guess if they both resolve, it's kind of hard to play around what our opponent would do, but something to keep in mind. Like the order you activate the cards can effectively change uh, what you end up doing. I guess it's guaranteed that we get Bunny Blast regardless, but we want to be sure that we're getting both, ideally. Combo would be nice. So Foolish Burial, dump Bunny Blast. I don't know why I shuffle it if I'm going to go back in. Normal Summon Rat, use Rat to dump Combo this time. We could also dump a Ram Ram to potentially set up for future, uh, future Combo plays, but I really like Combo for extra efficiency. Cause we're gonna be able to rat, summon rat again next turn. Uh, yeah, I actually like Ram Ram. Cause we do have the Avarice, so yeah, Ram Ram is fine. Now we have them both in the graveyard. That just that's just gonna help in the future. Something else we could also send would be Barrage, and then when we use Bunny Blast, we could add back Barrage, and that really gets the engine going because then you have like Barrage Tinky, which is a free card to pop with the Barrage. You've got two monsters going. It gets really easy to just overwhelm opponents like that, especially when you have defense too, plus the Dryden. So that's another potential play, but Ram Ram is a safe, a safe card. Oh, another thing I like about Combo, if you were to have sent that, is Combo also lets you play around DD Crow. Because a lot of times they're going to try to DD Crow you one when you Avarice, two when you Shock a Nine. Both of those cards target Dryden a lot. But what you can do is like activate, you know, 
uh, Shock 9 target Dryden. They try to DD Crow, you chain combo, shuffle your Dryden back anyways, and then just summon it. Or same with same with uh, when you try to activate a Pot of Avarice. So it kind of helps you play around Crow on your uh, Crow or uh, Hakero on your Dryden. So that can also be a big play if you're playing against Outlet. Then I would actually try to send combo or maybe even Cataroos so that we can attach it with Tiger Mortar. We got so many different plays we could do here. Like Rat seems like such a simple card. Oops, it's out of frame. Rat seems like such a simple card, but it really gives you a lot of flexibility in how you can play this deck. So I hope you guys kind of see that with this hand. But let's just play it out the way we did it, just to avoid any more confusion. Dump the Ram Ram, we've got the Bunny Blast. Let's go ahead and continue. So then from here, like I said before, we want to set up a Bunny Blast play. And it's really going to depend here how we want to play uh, Three Nibiru. If we want to play into it or play around it, we can. It just kind of depends on what we want to do. So if we want to play around Nibiru, what I would probably recommend is going Shock 9. This is the second summon. Use Shock 9 to get back the Bunny Blast. So that's one, two, three summons. We don't want to get the five, so we could actually just go Dryden't and then set in permanence, have the crow pass. And now we have three forms of defense with these three. And then the opponent, like sure we're not triggering the bunny blast ourselves, but it's still something the opponent's gonna have to deal with or we're gonna get the effect anyways. So passing on a bunny blast actually isn't terrible because a lot of decks are gonna struggle to deal, with, not struggle to deal with this, but I mean, they're gonna deal with it, but they're not gonna be happy about it. And you're still gonna get your rat. So that's something you could do if you wanted to play around Nibiru. Something else that you could do if you determine that you don't want to play around the Biru is you could just go into extra Zodiac Monster. So we could go Tiger Mortar. And then we could use Tiger Mortar's effect to put the Ram Ram as, a, as an attached card. That way our Dryden's going to end up with more defense. Then let's see. We already have five monsters at least, so the, the Avarice is live regardless, so we don't have to worry about that. So here we just want to save resources. I would actually just go with Hammer Kong Dryden. That way we have one material to pop the Bunny Blast, another material on the opponent's turn, and then we're still holding on to that Ram Ram so that our Dryden has some defense. So then we can use Dryden, destroy the Bunny Blast, and then add back Rat to our hand. And so like I said at the beginning of this turn, the goal here was to get back this rat in our hand so we have the follow-up play, we have the efficiency, and then we have the defense between these three. So this is pretty good. I think a lot of uh, a lot of decks are going to struggle to to get through Crow and Perm Dryden. If the, even if they do get through this, they're not doing like a major play to where they're winning the game. And then we have the follow-up play with the rat and the avarice. So I'd say this is a pretty good position. It's not an auto win, but it sets you up to be able to play through the rest of the game. Because once you get the Bunny Blast in Graveyard, you always have the ability to add back follow-up plays or add whatever you need back. So it's really important to get it into the graveyard early. And Foolish Burial, I think, helped a lot here because it, it helped us set that up. And it also meant that if the rat got stopped, we still had another way to get the Bunny Blast and still do the exact same play. So Foolish was good. Once again, it's a card I'm testing, but it was good here. It was solid. So let's see what we would have drawn on the next turn. We would have drawn a second copy of Tinky, which is kind of dead because we already have the rat. Not really anything we'd want to use a Tinky for per se. Maybe a whip tail, but that would maybe be a bit of a waste knowing that later on in the game we could average back the rat and search it again. So kind of not the best draw here, but maybe we resolve Avarice and then would draw two more. Of course, the deck would be shuffled most likely, but what could those two other cards be? Whip tail and the Biru, not bad. More defense and then whiptail good card so this is a pretty good hand but let's go ahead and move on to the next once again if you guys are enjoying this video be sure to give a like uh, again i'd really appreciate it because it does help the channel out a lot it really helps with the youtube algorithm and whatever goes on behind the scenes uh, so it does help. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe as well. If you guys enjoy this type of content, let me know. If there's anything you would like to see, leave uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, again, let me know. Always open to some constructive criticism and suggestions. I try to do whatever I can to bring you guys some good content. I think right now the main things I'm trying to set up are... I'm trying to do a, a Sky Striker 
uh, some Sky Striker content pretty soon. I've also got some Shadal stuff on the way. I needed to get a couple of cards to update my Shadal deck for Eternity Code format, but uh, definitely look forward to some Shadal stuff, some Sky Striker stuff, definitely more Zodiac stuff as well. I uh, have seen a lot of comments for Orcist. Only reason I haven't done more Orcus lately is because I don't have Gearsu. I think Gearsu is just a really bad buy right now. It's like 35 US dollars. And 35 for a rogue deck when there are no events is a bit high when especially when the unlimited editions come out. The price is going to drop because it's going to flood the market. It's going to drop to I think maybe, I mean it's going to at least drop down to 30. But I think 25 would be a good buying point for what that deck does. What the deck is able to do. And then like the rarity. It is a secret rare. But I think, I think 25 would be a good point. I, just, I think 35 is just a little bit overvalued. So uh, that's why I haven't done that yet. I c could do some dueling book stuff, but you guys don't seem to like dueling book as much. So yeah. Next hand. That was a lot of shuffling. Oh, I'll do a final cut. Bunny Blast, Ram Ram, Avarice. Eh, gross. This is a gross hand. Very similar to the first. And I'm kind of surprised I've drawn two hands out of three that had so many monsters. That definitely isn't uh, that common. Like considering the numbers, and we can run the numbers later, I'll put them in the comments, I mean in the description, but very unlikely to draw four Zodiac monsters. <laughs> but I think we do the exact same play here. Fortunately, we do have the Ram Ram, so we are going to be able to do the double Thoroughblade draw. So we're going to Tinky for a Thoroughblade. Seriously, hope we don't get in the beard here. That would be awful. Or any hand trap. Hopefully we're playing against Adamancipators, which don't play hand traps usually. Actually, never mind. We don't want to play against Adamancipators because their ceiling is so high that they maybe just like kill us unless we draw into Gozen match. Or in the Biru maybe. Man, not even the Biru's enough. Yeah, we need like a Gozen match here, but regardless. Uh, normal summon the Thoroughblade. Activate the effect, discarding the Ram Ram. And then we're going to draw into a Strike. Solid. Next we go into Shock and Nine. Same exact play as before. Shock and Nine bring back the Ram Ram. Trying to get everything in the frame. Then we go into Drydent. Drydent pop the Ram Ram. Ram Ram effect triggers. Summon Thoroughblade. Thoroughblade discard the Bunny Blast. And then we're gonna draw into, wow, goes in match. We're so good. So then once again, we go Tiger Mortar, give Dryden some much needed material. Then we're gonna go with Hammer Kong, set our traps. And this puts us in a pretty good position. Pretty good position, I'd say. We have uh, defense between the Dryden, the Gozen, and the Strike. The Hammer Kong protects the Dryden. We also have a potential follow-up play in the whip till next turn. We could just normal summon this. We already have Ram Ram and uh, Ram Ram and uh, Bunny Blast in the graveyard. So this is good. This is good as more follow-up plays too. We have the efficiency play in the Avarice. We've got everything we need. I'd say this worked out pretty well. We turned a bad hand into a relatively good one. So uh, nice. Let's just go ahead and move into the next one. Let's actually let's see what we would draw next turn. Draw into a Cataroos. This kind of sucks but there will be a starter card that lets us hold on to the whip tail for when we actually need it so it's not awful if let's say we were to shuffle back five xyz monsters what will we draw then tanky gozen solid but i'd say we probably win whatever game this is in just off of the gozen strike and dryden so if we're playing against outlich what is their out to this so they try to use golden lord or let's say they try to combo first right we're playing against Synchro Elish, they try to combo. We play Gozen match, they gotta stop their combo. They try to use Golden Lord to out the Gozen match, we strike that. Maybe they set Sanguine Conquistador. Conquistador can out Gozen match. So they can play on their next turn. When they activate Conquistador, we just chain Dryden't. And yeah, like, what do they do? They lose at that point. And then we still have everything else, and they just get out grinded through the Avarice, through whatever else we wanna do on our turn between Cataroost. We could use Whiptail to banish some of their stuff. We, we also have access to Thoroughblade, so if we wanted to Tiger Mortar Material back under the Dryden and go into the battle phase, we could also easily do 4,000 between 1,200 with the Whiptail, then attach the Whiptail. This is 28. So that's 4,000 right there, putting them under tremendous pressure to out the Gozen match or definitely lose on the next turn. So this would be very strong against most decks, I would say. This is as close to an auto win as I think we can get in this deck. Alright, let's 
do a couple more hands. Hopefully we don't draw all of our monsters again. I've seen some players decide to cut Thoroughblade down to two or even less. And I've also seen players cut Ram Ram as well. But as you guys saw in that last hand, access to Thoroughblade and Ram Ram is very good. It's like you want to play a lot of zoo monsters so that you're able to see them every single game. And even extras isn't terrible. One extra so that you have the follow-up play guaranteed. But Thoroughblade is the card that makes it so that if you draw three or four, you're still able to draw into the rest of your deck through its effect. You're still able to get to your other cards. So Thoroughblade is what makes the high Zodiac count okay. And then Ram Ram also helps with that as well, obviously. And then uh, Ram Ram is also just good because you want to get that in Graveyard because that's the card that enables your combo. So later into the game, you need or want Ram Ram in the Graveyard. So that's very important to play three of both. Obviously, you want a lot of Whiptails and you want the Rat. From there, the only questionable thing is Bunny Blast and Cataroos in this deck. Bunny Blast obviously is good because it gives you the follow-up play, so it's really good for the engine. I'd say Cataroos is maybe the card we can cut, though, because it's really just kind of a tech card, kind of for utility against decks like Outlitch. But you don't need it, but it's nice. You could cut it, though. But let's go ahead and draw into this next hand. Combo, Foolish, Tanky, Ram, and Crow. So similar hand to the other one to where we only have this one form of defense. We've got the efficiency play. We've got two normal summons pretty much. So we have starter cards. We have a follow-up play. We have a little bit of defense, not a lot. And we got the efficiency. I think what we want to do with this hand is definitely try to set up a little bit more, uh, a, a little bit more defense. So I think Dryden Crow is maybe not enough. So I want to go for a Thoroughblade play here as well. I think I've gone in the Thoroughblade like every hand so far. It's a little weird but i just think we need more defense in this hand so for this i'd say we have the tanky for thoroughblade let's do a little bit more shuffling yeah that's fine then we're going to we could activate the foolish too foolish would uh send the deck a little bit so if we were to foolish thing you want in the graveyard here i think is bunny blast that's what's going to that's going to be a card that you would want in Graveyard at some point into the game. We might as well get it in now while we can do it for free. If we're playing against Outlitch, I think Cataroos is actually a good option because, again, it's going to protect you from Golden Lord's effect if you're playing Outlitch. But if this is like a random turn one, we don't know what we're playing against. So in that case, we would want Bunny Blast because we already have the Ram to get in the Graveyard. next we'd activate the thoroughblade effect and then discard the ram ram because once again it's going to set up for future plays thoroughblade draws us into gozen match awesome awesome so from here actually because we have the gozen match gozen match dd crow is so good plus dryden of course that i don't think we need to go out like full full combo like we could just pass on like a very weakened board, but then have that goes and match and the crow and the dryden, and that maybe be enough. I think that's actually the play versus going into the double thoroughblade play. So what I would do in this case is go shock and nine. This is summon number two. Use shock and nine's effect to bring back the bunny blast. Again, this is gonna help us get that follow up play for next turn because we really don't have one right now per se. So it's gonna be important to do that. So this is summon number three. Then we can actually just go. We're going to end on Dryden, obviously. Let's go Tiger Mortar. Then Tiger Mortar can attach the Ram Ram to get some more defense. And then we can go Dryden. So that was... Let's see. This was the third summon. No, this would be the fifth summon. So we're not going to do the Tiger Mortar play. We're just going to summon Dryden on top of... Uh, on top of the Shaka Nine. Yeah. Because that would be five summons we don't want to play into in the Biru. Because if we play into in the Biru here, we actually end up in a very tough spot because we would lose our whole board with our hand. We have no follow up play. We didn't even get the combo in Graveyard, so combo would be dead. And then if we get in the Biru and we end up with the uh, with the token, if we end up having the Gozen match on our opponent's turn while we have the token up, we won't be able to play anything. So we actually would get locked out of our whole deck. So Gozen match would be dead as well. So this is a hand where you definitely have to play around Nibiru. Like you cannot play into Nibiru. So even earlier in this uh, in this hand, when we had the Ram Ram in the, in the graveyard and we brought it back, we could have uh, actually done a full, like a full combo, like a full Zodiac combo. 
like ended up with a mega collapse or whatever else you want to do but again this is the hand where you really have to play around the biru so i would just go into this play set the goes in match set the combo and pass turn and so we're going to be guaranteed to have a live combo now because we've got like we could just activate it we already got five monsters that's fine and then the goes in match is going to be huge plus the Dryden and the dd crow so that's a pretty good hand not i guess not a pretty good hand we made it good it got better the goes in match definitely changed things so let's go ahead and do another. We haven't even done the fire fist thing yet. Just saw the buffalo, but that, that's the other thing I like about the fire fist play. It's like a lot of people, I think, believe that you want to play this deck like a combo deck going first. You draw a tinky, it means you. Do the fire fist play you end on like appaloosa tanky and whatever else is in your hand great that's a fine play and all but i think when you do that you really miss the purpose of this deck i i, I just don't think you should play this as a combo deck as we guys mentioned as we mentioned before and like when you're doing who's the beat down theory it just doesn't seem to make as much sense like why put yourself at risk for hand traps for defense when you can already set up defense anyways These are like the exact same hands. We've seen this hand before, I think, or something similar. Uh, go play. I'll play it out really quickly just to see what we draw off the Thoroughblade, but we're just gonna do standard double Thoroughblade draw. Can I, I really wanna draw like some interesting hands here, but maybe I'll power shuffle again, but regardless, uh, not summon that first. Foolish Burial first, dump the Bunny Blast. This is literally the exact same hand. Not literally, but functionally the exact same hand. Dump the Bunny Blast. Summon the Thoroughblade. Thoroughblade effect. Discard the Ram Ram. Do one more final cut. Draw into Desires. That's pretty good. Mm, to Desires now or Desires later. Maybe Desires. I don't think it matters actually. It might not matter. So we go Shock Nine. Actually, you know what? Let's Desires. What if we draw into Barrage? That would be insane. So activate Pot of Desires. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And our opponent Ash Blossoms. Oh no. Let's just assume they don't, though. Did we draw into Thoroughblade Rat? Gross. But at least we have a guaranteed follow-up play for next turn. Let's see what we banished. Looks like everything we would have wanted to draw into. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six defense cards. Nothing that really matters, though, to be honest. The combo is kind of sucky, but we have two more in deck, so that's fine. Uh, from here, we would go into Dryden't. Dryden's effect. Oops. Accidentally knocked over the mic. Uh, Dryden's effect. Destroy the Ram Ram. Ram Ram. Revive. Thoroughblade. Thoroughblade. You want to discard the Cataroost here because you either could discard the Cataroost or the Thoroughblade, but I think you want Thoroughblade for later in the game. So uh, discard the Cataroost. Draw into Whiptail. Ah, this is a lot of monsters. And then same as before so tiger mortar give the dryden some materials and then borbo hammer Kong. not a huge fan of this hand because we only ended up with dryden dd crow as defense maybe with a hammer Kong, and we could have done this in a lot in a lot less risky of a fashion if we were just going to end up on two forms of defense one of which is a hand trap maybe we could have done none of this and then played around the Biru, played around Crow, Valor, and Permanence, Moonlight, Ghost Ogre, Ghost Chill thing. The new one, the wind one from uh, Eternity Code, whose name I can never remember. But we could have done this exact same board in a less risky fashion. But the hand just didn't, uh, didn't allow us to. So that's unfortunate. Not the best hand. I think I am gonna maybe Power Shuffle again, because that's 
we've, we've drawn a lot of monsters. Okay, power shuffled again. Let's keep this thing going. Just doing some more shuffles real quick. And let's see what we get. Whiptail, Whiptail, Buffalo, Nibiru. Eh. <laughs> uh, Buffalo sucks. Double Whiptail is also not the best. But I think it's pretty clear what you have to do with this hand. You want to... I mean, we at least have defense between Dryden't and then these two. We have a follow-up with a Whiptail. We don't have an efficiency play, but that's something we can worry about later. Hopefully, we draw well onto our next turn. But what you def definitely and obviously do with this hand is you just go Whiptail. And then you want to get at least four cards in the graveyard just for the potential average or the potential combo later. Like, you could argue that you don't need to get four just because Crow's going to be something. The beer maybe hits Grave and you have more monsters. But I think you want to get four just, just in case. So, let's see, one, two, three, and four. So I think here we just pass on a four material Dryden't and hope that the Dryden't and the Biru and the Crow get us there. That's really all we can do here. Let's see what we draw in our next card. Okay, so look next turn or if we're going second this wouldn't change much yeah hopefully this would just have to have to get us there if not then let's say that maybe we're able to stop our opponent between these three but they clear the board maybe they clear in the beard too let's just go full worst case scenario what we could at least do after that is go whip tail and shock a nine shock a nine back the dryden't Tiger Mortar, some material under the Dryden't. Probably best to go Whiptail. That way they just don't attack over it. And then we could... If you play a second Hammer Kong, then you could still go... Where's my other... Yeah. If you had a second Hammer Kong, you could go Borbo. Hammer Kong again. And in phase, you'd detach for the Hammer Kong. And we'd still be left with like a semi-reputable board. Like we have Hammer Kong, Dryden't. DD Crow, so we have two defense now, and an extra monster to maybe... It's something the opponent has to clear, or else we just start playing again next turn. So we would just shock a nine back to Dryden again, Tiger more, more stuff under again, and end up with the same board. So let's see what our next card is. And we really want this to be like an Avarice, a Desires, a Zoo Monster, just something. Oh, perfect. So let's say worst case scenario again, our whole board gets cleared, but we don't lose. And then on our next turn, we have the Avarice. So with this Avarice, you definitely want to shuffle back the Dryden't. But then from there, let's see, Shock Nine, Tiger Mortar. Yeah, I think you just want to go all, all Xyzes. But you really, you really want to get a Zodiac Monster too. So maybe you shuffle back a Whip Tail or two. You don't necessarily need the Shock Nine again, because you should have a third Shock Nine in the extra deck. That should hold you over for a turn. This would be fine. You could also maybe, if you play the third uh, Tiger Mortar, then you could, instead of Tiger Mortar, shuffle back a Whiptail. Then, yeah. This would be the best, because you really want to draw a Zoo Monster. If you don't draw a Zoo Monster, then you kind of lose. So, let's go ahead and slap these in the deck somewhere. Also, hopefully this doesn't get ashed. That would suck. That would really suck. Good thing we shuffled back the whip tail, but rat. Rat really saves us here. So I think here you'd want to normal summon rat. And you want to dump a combo just so you have some more efficiency plays moving forward because you've already gone through a good number of resources. Again, this is just assuming that like you're in a grind game at this point. Both players are really unable to play too much, but we've gotten a little bit going. We're able to play still. So what we could do here is, let's see. This is the grave. If we had left the Hammer Kong in grave, that would have been good actually. Because then we could uh, Shock and Nine back the Hammer Kong and then. Let's just say we did those. Let's, let's assume we play optimally here. So from here, yeah, we sent the combo. Then we could Shock and Nine. Shock and Nine bring back the Hammer Kong. Tiger. 
tiger mortar some material under the hammer kong and then we could summon Dryden't. Just realized I haven't summoned a single Link monster this video. That's crazy. But we would just pass on this. Then hopefully the, I forget if we assume that we use the Crow or not at this point, but from this point on, we would have to hope that the Dryden gets us there. Let's assume the worst case scenario once again, the board gets cleared. How efficient is this deck really gonna be? What do we draw? A Tinky, that's actually a really good draw. So from here, I think what I would do actually is activate a combo because I want to resolve that rat again because you want to get like a bunny blast in grave too. So I'd actually go for the combo here and then go rat, dryden't. Yeah, I think these five for sure. Shuffle these back into the deck. Again, we got that tinky and we really want to resolve rat again that's going to be able to get us to a ram ram or a bunny blast engrave see what we draw drew into a ram ram that's iffy but this actually does open up the door for us to go thoroughblade here maybe draw into some extra defense because lately we've been kind of stuck into that rut to where we have to either get the dryden or nothing else but here thoroughblade gives us a shot to draw into something else and then because we have the tinky access we always could do the uh the fire fist play whenever we want afterwards so we get tinky for thoroughblade normal summon the thoroughblade activate the effect discard ram draw into barrage that's actually really good oh wait i forgot buffalo's in our hand so we're not doing any fire fist plays this game that's unfortunate hmm trying to think of like a spicy play here we, we have some cool plays here so here we could actually uh let's go shock and I bring back ram ram and then hammer kong dryden't dryden't pop the ram ram bring back Thoroughblade. Thoroughblade, discard Whiptail to draw. It goes in match. Activate Barrage. Actually, we didn't have to Dryden pop that. We could have just Barrage pop the Ram Ram. That would have been good too. Again, we're going to assume we make the correct play. So we're just going to give this the material again and then assume the Barrage would have summoned something else like a whip tail maybe oh if we didn't use hammer kong here we could have maybe used something better like tiger mortar to give the dryden more material so let's say we summon tiger mortar and then use that tiger mortar to give our dryden ram ram or whip tail if we want to put damage whip tail would be good or maybe tack over a defense monster Maybe Ram Ram is solid just for the extra defense on the Dryden't. But then if we want from here, we could like go for some damage again if we wanted to, or we could uh, go Hammer Kong, attach the Whip Tail, and then have this set up for next turn. The Dryden's good. We got Barrage for extra pressure. Goes in match to stop our opponent if they decide to start playing. Sure, this getting to this point took so many assumptions and so many turns and extra draws, but we were definitely able to snowball to a point where we we're clearly in a pretty favorable position. So that was just a fun little uh, exercise. Let's do another hand. Hopefully we draw better. I don't know why I'm drawing so badly. I feel like whenever you're recording what you draw, I always draw worse. It's, it's like a weird thing. I also like can't even see the board really because there's a microphone in my face. So something gets off cam, sorry. Can't really see what's on and off the cam right now. Let's see, let's maybe do one or two more hands. Let's 
Ram, Avarice, Thoroughblade, Tanky, and Ash. I think this is the first time drawing Ash. Yeah, it is. So um, let's see, in this hand we have, we got an efficiency play. We have a follow-up play for sure through multiple uh, zoo monsters. We have one form of defense with the Ash Blossom. Again, not nearly enough. With the number of defensive cards you play, I generally like to have at least three, whether that be like Dryden 2 hand traps or Dryden trap hand trap. Multi like at least three forms of disruption. Two, sometimes okay if one of them is Gozen Magic and Nibiru, but generally three. And so we get in a hand like this. I think I really like multiple Thoroughblades again. And we also have the Avarice. So if we do get Nibiru, we would definitely have enough monsters in Graveyard for Avarice. I'm just debating if I want to show you guys that same combo again. Because I feel like we've done that like two or three times at this point. But it's such an integral part of the deck. It's just so important. Yeah, what the heck. So I think we go Tanky. And if we want to go for Bunny Blast, because that's a card you want to get into the graveyard, actually. You could also just do a single Thoroughblade and then get Rat to have Rat for next turn, which could dump combo, setting up for more efficiency. That's another option that you could do, but uh, again, that lowers the cards you could draw. I think here we would definitely want to draw on some extra cards. Even though we do have the Avarice, which is going to draw in even more cards. But because we are going to have access to the... Uh, the Ram Ram and the Bunny Blast already in the graveyard. That means we always have the ability to do the Fire Fist play, which gets back to Tanky, which means we get Search Rat, and then use Rat to dump combo like that. It's kind of convoluted, but we do have access to Rat like that if we needed to. So, activate the Thoroughblade, discarding the Ram Ram, draw into Nibiru. Great. So, extra defense, perfect. So, just like the other hand, I think at this point you could really determine whether or not. You want to continue doing the Thoroughblade play. We already have Nibiru, we have the Ash Blossom, and we're going to end on Dryden. We're definitely going to be able to, um, definitely going to be able to follow up next turn because we got the Bunny Blast as well. You, so from here, you could just do, I mean, you could do like a Mega Cops play if you're playing against Adamancipators because they really don't have an out to that. But my, my main issue with going into Mega Cops turn one is you don't know what you're going against. So say you're going against Eldritch, they're going to out it easily. They're just going to like Conquistador it or something and you know, laugh. That would be ridiculous. So Mega Clops play is definitely a little iffy, especially going first because you're ending on less defense. And some decks can just out it easily, easily versus other decks can't. Like decks like Adam Emancipators and Monster decks can't, but you play against Eldritch, uh, Sky Striker, Salaman Great, uh, Alter Geist, Guru. There are a lot of decks that can deal with Mega Clops pretty easily. So I generally like to save it for like the mid to late game or games two and three when you know whether or not your opponent's going to be able to deal with it. But then games two and three, you got to worry about Lightning Storm and other things. So it's a tricky card to play. It isn't just like you shotgun Mega Clops and win. Like you got to gotta think about it a little bit. But from here, I think we uh, have the ability to play relatively safely. So... Yeah, I think I would actually play around the Biru a little bit as well. You, we can afford to get in the Biru, like I said before. But we really don't want to if we can avoid it. So I think we just go... Yeah, we could Shock and Iron, bring back the Ram Ram. We really don't have to do that either, though. Hmm. We could just make a big Dryden with Tiger Border. But this at least makes it harder for the opponent to deal with the board. That's kind of the benefit. So this is Summon number 3. Dryden becomes summon number four and then we can honestly pass turn like this to where we have Dryden, Ash Blossom, Nibiru. That's going to be tough for a lot of this to play through. Then they've got to deal with this Ram Ram somehow too. If they don't deal with the Ram Ram, we either just start exeezing on top of it next turn, summon the Bunny Blast, start playing like that next turn. Like there's so many things we could do with this Ram Ram if they leave it on board. So they have to deal with the Ram Ram, they have to deal with Dryden, Ash, and Nibiru, and Avarice. Let's see what we draw next turn. Draw into a secondary Ram Ram. Not the best, not the worst, but hey. I'll, I'd will i rather not, but I'll take it. But what we could do on our next turn if, let's say, just the Ram Ram survives. Just trying to think of hypotheticals here. What we could do is, uh, I mean, yeah, there's just so much, honestly. We could maybe go Bunny Blast. Or let's say we don't want a normal summon. Let's say we want to keep our normal summon to ourselves. maybe in case they have some sort of disruption we want to hold that normal summon what we could always do is 
You can summon Shockanine. Activate Shockanine's effect. Detach. Bring back. Oh, the Dryden's Graveyard. We gotta... Is this the grave? Okay, let's say we also ashed our opponent. We ashed our opponent, and then we started with the Ram Ram. So we would need a fifth card in Graveyard in order to get the Dryden back. That's the downside of doing that play. Like where we're playing around the beer is it only gets four monsters on board. If one of them sticks, you can't activate the Avarice. So that's tricky actually. So I think here we couldn't combo too far actually. Unless we wanted to summon again. If we could normal summon and do some other plays, we could do that. But it's kind of risky at that point. Because if you end up playing a two in the Biru and you lose both of your monsters, then you're in a very rough spot. So I think we'd have to kind of maybe play it safe here. If we did use in the Biru, then obviously we start with a Zodiac card in our hand. If we don't need to use in the Biru, then this would work. To where we could just... Yeah, I guess we could go Dryden Hammer Kong. So we could... Shockanine back, the Dryden't, Tiger Mortar, some material under it, and then go Borbo Hammer Kong, and then we have Nibiru. That would be the play. If we were, if we did have Nibiru on our opponent's last turn, then I think the play would have been to activate the Avarice. So we would play the Avarice, shuffle all of our monsters back. And this would actually open us up to a lot more, I think. Not as much, actually, because then we don't have the graveyard as set up. But just a hypothetical. If you guys have any better plays, maybe I'm missing something, definitely let me know in the comment section below. Again, I always appreciate constructive criticism. Okay, I just thought about the better play, so... The hand is Bunny Blast, Ram, Avarice, Nibiru. Then we have Ram on board, Tinky on board, and then Dryden, Shaka Nine, Thoroughblade, and Ash in Graveyard. Their best play right here is just to normal summon either the Ram Ram or the Bunny Blast. Doesn't really matter which one. Preferably the Bunny Blast, I guess, just to get it in the graveyard. And then you can overlay both of these for a Shaka Nine. Like holding the camera with one hand, doing everything with the other. So yeah. Overlay for Shaka Nine. Activate Shaka Nine's effect. Bring back. You know what? Let's bring back another Shaka Nine because it isn't often you can Shaka Nine for Shaka Nine. So why not? Now what we can do is overlay the first Shaka Nine with a Borbo. The other one can't be overlaid on top of or used for Xyz material. Then we can go into another Shaka Nine. Activate the second Shaka Nine's effect. Bring back the Dryden or any other. Uh, Xyz in the graveyard and then from here we can either go into the fire fist play into eagle because we already have the tanky on the board so that's going to give us tanky back in hand that lets us search a rat we can send whatever we want with the rat so that could be solid maybe end on an appaloosa with three negates or we could go into any other link four that we find appropriate but the other option would be to go into the mega clops play from here and if our opponent has any cards on board we can shuffle something back into the deck revive the dryden and then be pretty set from there. And then the Avarice is going to be live either way. We would probably still have Nib and Ram in hand. So that would definitely be the best play versus just uh, Shaka Nining back Dryden and Tiger Mortaring material under it. You, I mean, you could, but this is definitely better. So hard make the Shaka Nine, Shaka Nine something back, make a second Shaka Nine, use that effect too, and you're good to go. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys saw any better plays that I could have made or if you have any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, anything, please let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate all comments. If you made it this far in the video, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel. This has been a long one, so you might as well just like it. You know, why not, right? But uh, again, I'd really appreciate it. Appreciate all of you guys do to support this channel. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.